We're going to begin with breaking news. Five U.S. citizens have been moved from an Iranian prison to house arrest as part of a deal between the U.S. and Iran. They include Iran's longest-serving American prisoner, Shah Mignamazi. He was charged in 2015 for having, quote, relations with a hostile state. It's the initial part of an agreement involving the eventual release of billions of dollars of Iranian funds frozen in South Korea. Mike Hanna's monitoring developments for us in Washington, D.C. Mike, what's the U.S. been saying about this? Well, they've welcomed this deal. Uh, the National Security Council spokesperson saying that these people should not have been imprisoned in the first place, also pointing out that this is the beginning of what is likely to be a lengthy process before these prisoners secure their final release. Now, the swap involves a number of Iranians being held in prison in America, and as well, and this is a complicating factor, some $8 billion in Iranian funds that were confiscated and were being held in South Korea. Now, part of this delay is going to be figuring out the logistics of getting those funds back to Iran. Iran making clear that this deal will not go ahead until that money is back in its coffers. Now, this deal is multinational. It involves Amman, Qatar, Switzerland, all of whom have been involved in the negotiations. And getting this money back from South Korea to Iran, it appears it will go back through Qatar and then get transferred from there. So a very complicated process. But nonetheless, uh, both the State Department and the National Security Council welcoming the fact that the process is now moving forward with the removal of these prisoners from prison to house arrest. Mike, thank you very much. Mike Hanna talking to us from Washington, D.C. We're going to go to Dorsa Jabari. She's joining us with the latest from the Iranian capital, Tehran. Dorsa, I understand, of course, that it's the weekend there, but has there been any sort of reaction from Iran about this? No, we have not heard from any officials uh, so far, um, but we have been hearing from local media and state TV that have been broadcasting this news and uh, quoting the Western media reports that have come out uh, over the past few hours. But we have been hearing from the Iranian foreign minister over the past few weeks, and most recently we heard from um, Amir Abdullahian on Tuesday, who uh, reiterated that Iran has been uh, swapping messages uh, with the United States through Oman and Qatar regarding this uh, prisoner swap and that it was going to be based on humanitarian grounds and no preconditions would be set. But it appears now uh, that there are some very uh, difficult conditions that Iran has set, being the release of $6 billion of frozen funds in South Korea. And, of course, this is money that Iran is owed. Um, and the South Koreans have been holding on to it since 2018. Uh, as a result of U.S. sanctions for the oil and gas that they've been purchasing from Iran. Uh, this is a very significant development, first of all, because it uh, provides an opportunity for both Iran and the United States to seize this chance to break this cycle of escalation that we've been seeing over the past few years. And we heard from the reports regarding these negotiations that they've been ongoing for two years. So this is an opportunity for both countries to show that they have the political will to move past their differences and to forge a more common ground, at least, to de-escalate the tensions that have been ongoing in this region over the past few years. Dorsa, thank you very much. Dorsa Jabari from Iran's capital, Tehran.